All right, so how do you calculate the charge pass during a CV? The way you do this is that you're gonna integrate the CV, the cyclic voltammogram, right? We know that a CV is a plot of voltage on the x-axis and current or current density on the y-axis. So let's just say current for now, talk about current density on the next slide. Um, but if you integrate those two things, take the area under the curve, right? You are going to get the multiplying those two. So you multiply um, I times V. That gets you power. You know, the formula power equals I times V. So if you have um, a CV and you have amps on the y-axis and you have voltage on the x-axis and you have some portion of your CV, let's say it looks like a nice duck, and you integrate here, okay? Now, there's different ways to integrate this, but one might wanna just look at the Faraday process. So you might wanna use a baseline that, you know, you wouldn't want to integrate this whole thing down here because that would be a non-Faraday process. Okay, so that's a detail that you'll have to figure out, but a lot of people will just draw some sort of baseline with the non-Faraday process, the charging process, because they just care about the CV portion for the Faraday process, right? So you have to figure that out, but um, that will get you power. So in here, you get units of watts when you integrate this. Usually you don't want watts, what instead you want is charge, right? Charge pass, number of which you convert, convert to then to number of electrons. So in order to do that, you need to divide by the scan rate. So that's what this says here. Power divided by the scan rate gives charge coulombs. Watt is a joule per second. So if we take joule per second and we divide by scan rate in volts per second, okay, we will get, the seconds canceling out, we'll get joules per volts. And remember a volt is a joule per coulomb. So if we go joule divided by that, the joules cancel out and we're dividing by coulombs on the numerator, so we get coulombs charge. From that, we can divide by Faraday's constant and get the number of electrons. And then from that, we can divide by a stoichiometric co coefficient and get the number of things reacting, for example. Okay, so super, super useful to do this gotta make sure you have the right units of your scan rate lest you get confused, right? So usually you're gonna wanna convert, usually people talk about scan rate in millivolts per second, so like 20 millivolts per second. So you wanna go, you know, that is 0.02 volts per second, right? Equals 20 millivolts per second. So just make sure you get that right. If you are um, integrating a plot where it's current density versus voltage, well then when you integrate this, portion, right, whatever portion you want to integrate, you're going to get um, power density. So you're going to get watts, your units are going to be watts per centimeter squared. Here we have milliamps per centimeter squared and volts. So if we integrate this, we're going to get milliwatts per centimeter squared. We can then divide by the scan rate and we could get, uh, if we just divide by the scan rate in volts per second, we'll get milli coulombs per centimeter squared. Okay, which is still useful. Uh, but a key thing here, right, is if you want to talk about the whole cathodic scan of this CV, well, you better do both sweeps, right? So you better do both sweeps. Okay, um, and pay attention to whether or not you want the Faraday processes or not. You can see here how I did it. I didn't, the Faraday processes are so small, uh, non-Faraday processes are so small compared to the Faraday processes, so I just integrated to zero. I have a lot of reactions occurring here, so I don't really care about the non faraday processes. The baseline is so small. Relatively, it's not going to change my answer. It's less than 1% you know, deviation. Can't even see it on the scale. So I just go to zero. But depending upon your experiment, you know, non-Faraday non -faraday processes could make a big difference.